through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Drop it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows ekphrastic. I get drastic. Hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave you drastic. Welcome to the MacGuffin, episode 194. I'm Spencer. I'm Greg. Today we're going to give you our DVD rundown Yeehaw. for the week of... That's... Is that no DVD roll? What what is the yeehaw? roundup? Roundup. That's, what that's I was right. Thinking. Yeah. You're right. Uh, we're gonna give you our DVD rundown for the week of October 9th, starring that's Tuesday. Uh, The Rock and Sean William Scott. <laughs> yes, that is us. <laughs> you can judge which one's which in that. Clearly, scenario. Sean William Scott. <laughs> Look at the beefcake over here. Boom, gun choke. Uh, we're gonna start. I, I thought it was a pretty good week overall. You not know, bad. You know, not too shabby. Uh, we're going to start with the big release of the week, which mm -hmm. is Prometheus. Yes, the most boring, pretty movie I've ever seen. Wow. <laughs> there hasn't been one more than that? No, I feel like no, there's got to be I just one. Felt like, I just felt like throwing out a burn first thing. It's not All the right. most boring, pretty movie I've ever you're seen. Sure, However, sure. it is probably my least favorite alien movie. Pro right below the second Alien vs. Predator. Below the second? Wow. AVP, Oof. AVP2, Prometheus. Oof. Ouch. <laughs> Greg is not feeling generous today. I did not like that movie. I, I definitely did not hate it that much, but uh, yeah, it was not as good as Alien, I'll say that for sure. Yeah. But it's got a very uh, co uh, comprehensive yes. release going on. They got the Blu-ray 3D, Blu-ray, DVD, digital copy, all in one package. Yes. Um, wanted to note, not sure what exactly this means, mm. but in the notes for the release, they list it as the theatrical cut of the film. So I don't know if that means that there's a director's cut. Well, I, th I think what happened is soon after it came in theaters, they announced that there was going to be a director's cut. But mm. then when the actual first release date and details started rolling out, it was clearly announced that this was not that yes. cut. So even though they promised a director's cut, this is not it. So yeah, it's unclear what, yeah. if anything, that will be. But right. as of now, this is the theatrical yes. cut. Um in terms of uh, features, it's got you know commentary by Ridley Scott, commentary uh, including Damon Lindelof from mm, Lost, who's yes. one of the writers. For it's the got screenplay, I believe. One of them, yeah. yeah. Um, it's got deleted and alternate scenes, including an alternate opening ending. Yes, could be interesting. Not sure if those are complete because I've seen some like pre-visualizations and, and stuff, stuff on yeah. the internet, so I'm not sure if they're actually complete or if it's yeah. some rough cut yeah. or something yeah. based upon It'd that. It'd be interesting to see. Uh, there's a feature called The Furious Gods, which is about the making of Prometheus, yes. which I'd be very interested, depending on how much Ridley the Scott. As well. Yeah, and uh, there is also uh, a whole bunch of like um, production information in the Wayland Corp archives, which include pre-visualizations, screen tests, and stuff like that. Yes, a whole bunch of other stuff in addition to that. But uh, you know, it's a pretty pretty solid addition. Uh, again, I don't know. You know, with director's cuts versus theatrical cuts sometimes they're better sometimes they're worse yes hard to say which one this will be at this point yes um, especially with ridley scott his right his original cuts are oftentimes uh not studio friendly and sure. just get changed and so the the one thing i will say is that a lot of the early ones like blade runner and stuff were before he was necessarily True. ridley scott so at True. this point you think he'd be like kind of like christopher nolan and yes. be able to do what he wants yes and like with legend another one that, that another notorious one that one was almost entirely just based on soundtrack changes not actually very many scene mm -hmm. changes or very very few so we'll, we'll see if there yeah. if there even is one you know yeah. it's all speculation yeah. at this point and there's no concrete evidence yeah i it's hope imminent. that when it comes out maybe there is around the time it comes out maybe an announced uh director's cut or it would be a good tie-in to have be like stay tuned for the director's cut or at least maybe put would, an ad for it i think that would undercut their business so that's, uh, that's, prob that's maybe probably in it. Not maybe if they put it in the dvd <laughs> that would be the biggest dick move ever if they put like, it out what company does uh, it say 20th 20th century, century fox they do that they totally <laughs> they like by the way, you've just bought this, but there's a better edition coming out in three months. Sucker. Hopefully the digital copy is actually digital, because I heard someone, I don't remember what I was looking at, a DVD the other day, that the DVD, digital copy required the disc to be played. Ooh, that, would which be, is, that would be shitty. Eliminates the whole point yeah, of it. That would be it? shitty. Um, moving right along, mm -hmm. next up we have a musical that came out this summer, Rock of Ages. <laughs> Any way you want it, that's the way you'll get it, Greg, mm. because they have the Blu-ray, DVD, and ultraviolet copy all together in one package. Well, that doesn't sound like any way I want it. What if I only wanted one of those? It sounds like 
I can only get them all together. So you lied to me, Spencer. Uh, you and the 80s I lied to me. I think, I think there actually are other options, okay. but that's the only one I subscribe to. Like, so I can't get it anyway. What as far as you're concerned. Maybe as yeah. far as the, the distribution yeah, company. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, Fair I'm enough. a fascist. I'm okay with I'm, you being the fascist. Yeah, yeah. That's, as long so. as we can make the clear distinction that it's you and no. not Warner Brothers yeah. that's being the fascist in this instance. Maybe next time the tables will be switched. <laughs> you know, this is one of those films that sort of split audiences. Uh, a lot of people really like the film because yes. they love the music of the time, you know, the 80s. Or they like the stage performance. Yeah, which is who the director, the director of it is the one who created the original stage performance. I love performance. when that happens. It's usually Shakeman. the best adaptation. Sure. And so if you like the, you know, 80s music of Rock of Ages, haven't seen it yet, this mm -hmm. is probably a film up your alley. For me, not so much. I don't subscribe to musicals. I, I like musicals, but I hate 80s music, so it's That's kind right. of like a, yeah. Mixed bag for yeah. you. Uh, it's got an extended cut of the film on the Blu-ray of it. Okay. Know that. Um, in addition, it's got Rock of Ages, Legends of the Sunset Strip. Rock I don't know of what Ages! Sounds pretty awesome to me, and it has a lot of um, featurettes about defining a decade, because you know it's uh, yes. set in the 80s. So yeah, you got, it's like, quite a period. Stories we sing, the 80s look, uh, the tease, if you build it they will rock it, stuff like that. These are all featurettes about defining a decade. So, you know, if, if you like musicals, if you like this movie, if you like the stage show, yes. perhaps it's worth checking out. Otherwise, I, I'm not blown away by the release. One, one thing I can say definitively, I feel like the 80s, maybe it's just because the 90s are still too present, but the 80s feel like one of the last v definitive visual decades where I think mm. you, could vi you could clearly label something as the 90s, but I think it would be harder than it would yeah. 80s, 70s, it's 60s. They all have much, distinct much visual more distinct. styles. That's true. And sti styles in general, both visual and like with culture of the time, I think. Obviously, there's culture in the 90s and 2000s, but I think maybe because it's still present. But even in the 90s, the 80s fashion was still really strong. Yeah, so it, I feel, think... it does feel a little bit like a step down, but I don't know. Maybe we need to do more research on this subject. But I would just say that because of that, uh, it's an interesting time period, even if it's not one I'm a fan of. Sure, so it's, totally. It's, and I appreciate the yeah. attention to, you know, make that time yeah. period authentic. Exactly. Period pieces are really big recently. So, it, but <laughs> It's funny to think about that as a period piece. <laughs> That's sort of sad. Because um, <laughs> we were bored of the 80s? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Let's move right along. Uh, another one that's kind of a cool release is the Dial M for Murder Blu-ray, Blu-ray 3D release. Ooh, 3D um, release, huh? Well, I note this because Dial oh, M for yes. Murder is actually a 3D film. That's right. Um, apparently, Alfred Hitchcock decided to you know, stick to the stage origins, origins of Dial M for Murder, and the result was... Um, uh, engaging chamber movie as, as they describe hmm. um, but it was filmed in the trendy 3D process and you know uh, unfortunately at that time it was rarely shown in the proper 3D projection going uh, instead yeah. for the 2D um, release except for a reissue limited theatrical run in 1980. Wow. So essentially... Did the movie originally come out? Does it say on there? Uh, I don't know off the top of my head. Um, okay. But huh. nevertheless... Um, Interesting. It really hasn't been appreciated for the yeah. 3D film that it is. And yeah, so that's... I'm very curious to check it out now that it's come out. I mean, granted, I don't know how many people have Blu-ray 3D players or set up even to play it if they do have them. Yeah. But what we can hope is that because there's so many more th 3D theaters that maybe some like uh, smaller run theaters that have the technology might re yeah. re reshow it. That'd be pretty have, cool. Like a Wednesday movie night thing. So or, you dial in for murder for four bucks. Or best case scenario, they post convert a perfect murder and re-release that theatrically. Because that is a remake of this movie. Oh. Just throwing that little bit of tidbit out Just there. blowing minds like scanners. He's just yeah. exploding brains over yeah. here. So that's cool. I think uh, because it has both uh, the 3D and the 2D cuts uh -huh. of the movie on one Blu-ray disc, the fe featurettes are pretty brief. Uh, you yeah. have uh, Hitchcock and Dial M and a, uh, 3D, A Brief History huh. includes. So interesting. Kind of light, but you know, not Kind of interesting to see that we're at the point where we have the home consumer technology, even if it's not super popular for things like that to actually yeah. have home versions. Or to make a re return when yeah. they've been forgotten in the past. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. The final one. Big fans of film history here. Yes, we are. The final one we're going to talk about, though, is one that is uh, personal to me on a lot of <laughs> levels. Not just because it's awesome and it was released in my birth year, mm -hmm. but because it is E.T., the yes. extraterrestrial. Yes. All sorts of goodness included in this. Um, this I is, hope this uh, has guns, not walkie-talkies. 
It does, okay. yes. Spielberg Spielberg <laughs> has admitted that that was a mistake, and he's gone back and corrected Unlike it. Unlike his good friend Lucas, who never admits a mistake and simply makes two two more for yes, everyone. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, this is just titled the Anniversary Edition, instead of like labeling it 30th Anniversary, ah, which it is. through Universal, of course. Yeah. So, so they've got to... Prepare for everything that prepare they can for this the year. Future, yeah. <laughs> but uh, this includes a digitally remastered, high resolution, 35 millimeter uh, cut of the film wow. to make the most from your HDTVs. <laughs> it has the ET journals featuring behind the scenes footage from the filming of the movie. Um, it's got Sp Steven Spielberg and E.T. with the direct, uh, Spielberg reflecting on the film and his experiences working with the children as well as his oh, overall yeah. and current perspective on E.T. It's got a look back, a special insider's look inside the making of E.T. featuring interviews with Spielberg, the cast, and others intimately involved with the film. Wow. And one of the most interesting to me, E.T. reunion, the Ooh. cast and filmmakers reunite to discuss their thoughts on the impact of the film which is pretty cool because think about like henry thomas was a child uh -huh. i think d wallace was one of the highest billed people if not the highest billed actor yeah, probably because drew the barrymore film. was nothing obvious she was incredibly no. childlike yeah. as well i think it was like her first film yeah and so i bet i bet hidden in there somewhere is henry thomas's screen test somewhere in one of those featurettes uh maybe that'd be pretty awesome because i've seen it it's, it's a really interesting uh but you know it's it's i mean i love the movie i i'm i'm, ho I'm definitely looking forward to seeing you know um going back to the original et yes and reunions I, man it's crazy that we're getting the princess bride reunion just yeah, happened seriously. we're getting to that age spencer finally where our childhood movies are gonna have like 20 25 year they've been doing reunions. the goonie ones for a while now <laughs> yeah. so it's not well, really that's astoria is awesome so yeah people and the goonies are good enough for me um <laughs> needless to say i love et uh -huh. definitely a solid release and you know you got blu-ray dvd and digital copy plus ultraviolet all in one package can't go wrong with spielberg movies on blu-ray i mean if there's anybody he's one of those directors that just every movie he's shot he's paid so much attention to detail and much it. like the indiana jones release that they just yes. had that had a ton of special features yes. and this one does too so spielberg's also very big in the behind the scenes stuff he he's very big on the behind <laughs> very nice yeah he had tons of stuff for indiana jones so i look forward yeah. to see what he archived with this one so saved at, for this moment yeah absolutely <laughs> that's our dvd rundown for the week of october 9th join us next time as we we talk about uh, Brian Cranston yes. in honor of Argo. Yes. As always, you can find us at MacGuffinPodcast.com, Twitter.com slash MacGuffinCast, Facebook.com slash MacGuffinPodcast, phone number 323-761-9842. We're on iTunes, Miro, Roku, Blip. Check in, get glue. Always good. And we will see you next time. Can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Magneto can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. It's tight, don't even try to bite the sound. Mr. Spock can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The Borg can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The Borg can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.